up close video. Today's one is for Tonic Showcase number 39, which is the Thankful Harvest gift box. And it's a really um cute, decent size gift box that also has this pocket element that you can put a gift card in as well. Um, and you can have a, two gift cards in it if you want to, or you can put like um, um, a little note and a gift card in one side and a note in the other side, um, or you can mix it up however you want to really. And there's also a cool mechanism for closing it. I didn't actually use the mechanism on my box, but you have all of the elements in here to be able to do that and you get the instructions inside the packaging as well. I don't have the packaging to show you, but you should get instructions. Um, they fold outwards now and they have all of the instructions instructions inside them. So um, I thought I would actually be a little bit cleverer with um, how I'm showing you these dies and put them back on a magnetic sheet as I show them to you so that I don't have to spend a while trying to configure them back into the right position. So um, I'll show you the box first actually. This is the cool little box that it creates. It reminds me of um, the shape of it reminds me of one that came out a while ago, I cannot remember the name of it, but I did a, a clear acetate version of it and I put lots of Nouveau products on and I had a dragon inside it and it was like a crystal um, sort of design. This one is much simpler, the other one had, I think it tilted on an axis and had an opening in the front, but um, it, it reminds me of that kind of shape. So if you have that one, I can't remember the name of it, but if you have that one, um, you could maybe mix and match some of the decorative panels from between them, because I have a feeling it's a very similar shape shape to this um, but you could definitely do that if you wanted to change it up because I'm sure it had some like bull rushes that came in the front of it and stuff as well um, so you could definitely mix and match autumn and, and different seasons and stuff. I absolutely love that this one is autumn and um, harvest kind of themed though because it's got pumpkins in it and my little dog is called pumpkin so um, it's got gorgeous little pumpkin elements hidden within the decorative panels as well um, so it's a really really pretty one but it creates this gift box that you can then open at the top or um, I've just uh, fastened it with some baker's twine but you can do the proper locking mechanism to it as well if you want to that actually has like a sliding piece that goes I think it goes inside I'm not actually sure because I haven't done it maybe it slots through this and tucks back in the other side I'm not 100% sure and um, I'm sure other people on the design team will have shown you exactly how to do that but I've left my box so it opens both sides like this you can stick one side shut if you'd rather as well and just have it opening on one side but I decided to make it double opening like this and I've just put a couple of panels in here and used parts of this piece that is that main locking mechanism um, just to add little decorative pieces on there but you could put one as the little um, note on one side and then one as a gift card on the other side as well and you've got all of the panels to decorate all of the different areas of this too which is really nice so um it's a really cute little gift box and a decent sized one you could definitely put um a good handful of chocolates in there um maybe a lovely little knitted um item or you could put um like potpourri in it maybe maybe not even have it as a gift box maybe have it with the openings on either side and have it as like a hanging um potpourri kind of thing that has like autumn-y um, scents in it like pumpkin and cinnamon and stuff so you could do all sorts with this one so that is the actual main box that it creates and to create that main box you need two of these pieces so this is the main portion of the box you can see here these portions create that fold in piece that you can put the gift card in and out of this is the angled portion this is the base of the box and these are those two side pieces so you cut two of them and you stick them together on this rectangle here you twist them and then stick them together on that rectangle to give you your whole net of your box so a really simple one you only have to do two lots of cutting to get the entire box out which is really nice then if you're doing the actual locking mechanism that it shows you in the instructions you'll need to cut some extra panels with this die here and you can see it's got two notches in the metal and there is also this little die here that gives you the little slot so you can uh, place that into there and cut them together to give you the perfect position for the little slot um, to create that actual locking mechanism um, or you can just use extra ones of these to put on the inside if you don't want that little pocket to be there maybe you just fold those bits in and cover it up with one of these as well or you can just completely cut them off as well if you want to um, if you don't want that whole pocket element on the side pieces inside so those two pieces create that sort of portion and you will notice uh, which panel is it this one here 
this panel here, uh, which is one of the decorative panels, actually puts two dots just there because this design already has a slot built into it, which I'll show you up close in a minute, uh, but it already has a slot built into it. But the pumpkin one, the one with the pumpkins and the leaves, doesn't have a slot built into it. So if you want to um, put a slot into it, you can line up the two holes in this die with the um, two little pierced pieces once you've die cut it obviously um, and actually die cut the slit into the patterned panel as well if you want to be able to do that locking mechanism but also want to use the um, harvest sort of panels with the pumpkins and leaves in there as well so you've got those options for doing that as well so those are like uh, the main pieces that you need for creating the box then, uh, decorative panel wise, you have all of the panels have this beautiful wonky stitched detail on them and these two ones are exactly the same size. One of them gives you those two little pierce details I just showed you about lining up the slit and the other one is just plain. So depending on if you're just cutting plain bits of cardstock you can use this one. If you want to line up the slot with the harvest panel then you can use this one as well or you can just cut the harvest panel with this one as well and that's what I did and I didn't bother doing the slot but you just have those two little dots there but it just looks like part of the pattern and you wouldn't really notice unless I pointed it out to you. So um, you've got both those options for the main rectangle panel. Then um, you've also got the side pieces to decorate that inside little um, pocket that you can put your gift cards in. So you've got the two sides again with that wonky stitch kind of look to them, really pretty. I love that tiny little stitching detail. You've also got the front portion uh, or the back portion um, to decorate as well, again with that beautiful stitch detail. It makes a really lovely shape when you cut it out as well, perfect for a gift tag. I've used it as an aperture in a card as well. Um, it's just a really unusual kind of diamondy sort of shape that I think would be useful for a lot of different um, kind of card projects as well. If you like bigger cards, you could maybe even line up four of them and create a big massive design with a square in the centre as well if you want to or you could line them up this way and put maybe six of them together to create some kind of geometric looking flower with like geometric edges to the petals that might look cool as well even for creating a massive three-dimensional flower as well not necessarily on a card it could be like a home decor kind of piece too so you've got that piece then you also have the little panel to decorate um, that sort of beveled side and it would fit on the bottom of the box as well. Again, it's just got the stitching detail on there. And then you also have uh, this little piece that will decorate that top portion of where the two bits go together as well. So if you're using patterned papers, um, you can still decorate that little top tab as well, which is really lovely. Then for the decorative portions, you've got a full set of that beautiful autumnal pattern with the pumpkins and the leaves in there. I don't, yeah, there are acorns in there as well. So you've got um, the main panel that you can use for the front or the back. You have also got the um, rectangle with those two little notches missing in the design so that you can put that slit in there if you want to. But if not, you don't really notice that they're in there as part of the design when you cut it out. Um, then you also have this small rectangle that matches the design as well. You've got an acorn and a leaf in there with some extra different leaf details in there as well. And you also have the two side pieces um, that go in, sorry, I need to show you them first, that go um, in the little flaps that create that little pocket on the inside as well. You've got both handedness of them, so you've got one design for each side of them, which is lovely. And then you also have the full set of um, different designs that kind of have this, they're still, they've still got that autumn theme to them because there's still an acorn in this one, there's a leaf in one of the others, but they've got this beautiful swirly design and straight design in there as well. Um, so it creates a really different kind of look to the box as well, less of an overall kind of pattern, more of a symmetrical, more intentional kind of a pattern. Not quite symmetrical, but, you know, it's got more of a symmetrical look than the previous one. So you've got that panel there. Then you also have 
this panel that has the slit built into it. So if you're going to do the slit um, closure mechanism, this panel is the perfect one. It's already got the slit, the slit in there for you. Or you can also use the, um, if you wanted to back this with a solid piece, you could use the one with the notches plus the slit just as the solid piece to cut the slit out to go behind this one as well. And then you'd get the slit in the perfect position too to be able to do that. So you can either cut your slit into this design or you can utilise um, that die with the notches and the little um, slit die to be able to create a solid piece to go behind this one as well so it's quite nice to have um, lots of options of how you could do it but again beautiful slightly more um, symmetrical sort of design with those swirls lots of the straight lines in there and this one's focusing on the leaf design in this one really really pretty these would make fantastic panels for your cards as well I didn't actually use uh, this one I used the um, the sort of diamondy shaped version of this on one of the cards but this one would look fantastic as well then you also have the two matching side pieces to go on the inside of that pocket as well with that partial leaf design in there and the straight lines in there um, and again they're the different handedness of each other so you can put them next to each other to create patterns on your card or you've got both options for both sides of that little pocket as well then you also have the piece to go on um, the smaller rectangle that could decorate that uh, sort of beveled under piece or the bottom of the box as well um, with a part of the same design from this main piece here. So it's actually got the same part of the design just from there. So they've replicated that which is nice so it'll match everything together. Then around that one you do also get a little gift tag. So you've got a little rectangular gift tag with the little eyelet hole on there as well um, that you could put either of these two little patterns into depending what kind of gift tag you want to go for or you could just hand write something onto there. You could put one of the extra die cut elements onto the front of it and then hand write on the back of it as well or you can just cut it out of a pretty luxury cardstock too. So that is that. Then you also get an extra rectangular panel, which is actually, if you put this on the box, it'll be sideways, but you can also use some of these um, larger rectangles just to create a gift tag as it is, or this could just be a pull-out card that goes inside the inside pocket as well that says forever thankful on it. And it's in the same sort of style as the second a lot of patterns that I showed you with the little um, cut-out squares going around the edges, the straight lines across the bottom, a beautiful bold font in there, and then you've also got a small little acorn in there too and I actually use this on a card I think this is the one I turned into a shaker card um, so you can do all sorts with these onto your cards as well so you've got that one then you have this piece here which is part of the locking mechanism and it explains how to do that in the instructions and it has this deboss detail in there and I recommend if you want to get that deboss detail really nice and deep um, to cut it from a piece of card but also put another piece of card underneath it so you've got two thicknesses of card and it will really squish that detail in or if you don't want to use two pieces of card um, you could run it through um, with the green squishy mat to emboss the detail into it really nice and deeply as well and then you could also use your mousses and stuff to pick out the detail once it's run through too and you'll notice there's like a circular portion on this because um, you can use magnets in the closure as well and they also give you the little circle here so you can put that circle circle on whichever side of this piece that you've put your magnet um, and it acts as a little magnet cover which is really nice so it kind of secures that magnet in place by being attached on both sides uh, with a piece of card but it also hides the magnet as well which is nice um, then we also have the final little decoration so I love this little one Obviously, I love it because it's a pumpkin, but it says eternally grateful on it as well. And you have the outside edge. So if you want to back this with vellum, you can cut that out of vellum and then you can cut both of them together and you get a beautiful pumpkin with that vine on there. Um, this little banner says eternally and it debosses into it. And then you've also got a beautiful scripty grateful, which you can also just snip that grateful out and use it as a sentiment on a card as well. But really pretty. This would work really nicely Um as a gift tag it has a loop in the vine here so you could just make it as a gift tag that hangs on the box as well or you can put it on the front of the box like I did it fits really nicely on this panel here you can use it on your cards as well it's a really lovely little um, autumnal kind of decorative piece 
Then you also have this small little pumpkin um, that I showed you before that just has debossing details every other segment of the pumpkin. So you'll get a beautiful detail if you cut this into satin mirror card or normal mirror card. You get a really good um, impression with that kind of die with those kind of cardstocks and then finally you have the last two dies which are the ones that are featuring heavily in my um, tutorial video which will be up tomorrow so you've got a gorgeous leaf and a gorgeous acorn as well and again they're like that pumpkin one they have the separate pieces so if you want a solid backing piece behind it whether you just want it to be vellum to mute the background or whether you want to cut this from a solid colour and then have the detail place that back over the top and paper piece the detail back in you've just got that backing plate to be able to put those details back in to show glitter underneath to show gilding flakes underneath um, or just have vellum and mute it as well which is really lovely and you've got the gorgeous leaf there as well so those are all of the dies from the set and I don't have to spend ages putting them back on the magnetic sheet because I did it as I went along um, so I'll just move all of this out of the way and then I'll come back and show you the five cards um, and I'll show you the box in more detail as well so here is my little collection of cards that I have created. Um, the first one, I love this kind of technique. I, I haven't actually done a tutorial video on it yet, but I did it the first time with um, Expanding Moose when that came out probably like four or five years ago now. Um, and basically you stack up a couple of die cuts and then you scrape your product through it making it level with the top die cut and then you if you're using expanding mousse you expand it if you're using other things you just let it dry and then you put another one over the top I've also done this with like flooding with nouveau drops and stuff as well which I think I have done a tutorial on but this kind of one with spreading more of a medium through it um, I haven't actually done this version of it before this is actually using um, the glitter accents in the harvest moon because I thought that would be the perfect colour um, with a few gold bullion. Is it gold bullion? Nope, radiant gold, silver bullion, isn't it? Uh, radiant gold um, gilding flakes on there as well. And I just press them in and then burnish them once it was dry and then put the other die cut over the top. But it gives such a luxurious kind of finish. You could do this to all of the panels on your box as well. Um, you know, depending who it's for, how much time you want to put into it, you could do this kind of technique for the panels on the box as well. Um, and then I've just layered up the pumpkin. So I've done, um, I've cut one from white, one from gold in the detail, I've cut the solid one from vellum, and then I also just placed a piece of the ginger pie cardstock behind the pumpkin as well. And then I shadowed the two die cuts, cut another um, of the little section that says eternally from gold and placed that over the top. And I've also put some of the um, golden acer little uh, confettis on top of there as well because I thought they go absolutely perfectly with this kind of theme and I do feel like the background looks too simple from where you're looking but if you catch it in person you can see that there is um, beautiful sparkle on there this is actually I said this in a video a while back that I'd done this, but this is the Aspen Gold Mica Mist that I put into an empty glitter gloss. Um, I'd run out of uh, my glitter gloss in here after diluting it a few times to get it to go further, um, but I just um, filled the rest of it up with some Aspen Gold Mica Mist. So all of your mica mist that you have from Tonic, if you're not that keen on spraying them, if you have empty water brushes or um, empty glitter glosses and stuff that you've used up over the years, you can actually put your uh, mica mist into these and then you can just paint with them straight away. So I just did um, a, a wishy-washy sort of watercolory background. I can see it better in person than I can on the camera, it's really weird. It's got a little bit of glitter in it still because there was a little bit of glitter left in the glitter gloss when I put the mica mist in there. Um, but it just gives a little bit of subtle detail. If I wasn't trying to stick to um, all of the elements from a showcase, I probably would have done a bit of subtle stamping in the background as well. But I do really love that little panel detail and um, the simplicity of it as well. And obviously you've got uh, two other designs that you could do exactly the same thing with. Um, maybe one of them you'd want to put landscape because it's the, the sentiment version as well. But you could also use those on a card two so that's the first one that I've done then um, I did this one as a shaker card so this is the forever thankful one and in the background I've used um, those golden acer leaves a few microbeads that I had it was a mixture of microbeads and like tiny little sequin centers you know that sort of like chunky glitter that comes out the middle of a sequin and then I also used some of the autumn blaze uh, mixed sized sequins so there's three different sizes in there I think they came in the same harvest moon color trend pack I don't 100% remember but I think they probably did um, and I've used them 
as the shaker elements in here and then I actually cut the main outside edge that you're supposed to use to create that extra mechanism for the locking mechanism plus one of the stitched ones um, inside each other to give these skinny frames and then I just put them on there wonky um, so I did one from a just a I think it's called cosmic copper and the other one I think it's called Bronze Labyrinth. There, it does squash the detail a little bit on the Bronze Labyrinth, Labyrinth, but you can still see that it's got a little bit of a pattern on it as well. But those colours just got absolutely perfectly for this kind of thing. And then I've also put... Um, I've got a little bit of glue on there, annoyingly. Um, but I've also put um, the acorn on there, which I've backed with the Ginger Pie cardstock. And then I filled in the top of the acorn and put some of those sequins in there as well, just to finish that off. Um, and it's a really quick and simple little thank you kind of a card that's a gorgeous shaker card and then this one also could have been a shaker card but I wanted to just show you how you can uh, really simply just use the dies and recess them behind each other so this is the aperture from this die cut that I was showing earlier so I literally just cut that one straight into the card then I cut the detailed one into a piece of mirror card I didn't use the outside edge I just cut it straight into a piece of mirror card and then you raise this aperture up with foam tape over the top of the mirror card cut one and then you put foam tape behind the mirror card one and you put a piece of cardstock behind that's the cosmic copper um, pearlescent cardstock behind there and then it just creates a really simple kind of card. You can do this with obviously all of your different patterned panel dies from all sorts of different die sets. Um, but I just, I really love that shape. I just felt like that shape would make the perfect um, sort of motif on on a card. And I just love the, the details that they've put in these panels as well. Really, really pretty. And then I finished it off with one of Tonic's little sentiments that I bought relatively recently. I think it's an older one. Um, but I saw it on there and I really like the font of it. So it's just a thank you that also has a bubble around it as well. It's just one of their mini sentiment dies. It's 4206E if you're interested in that one. They should still have it because I only bought it recently. Um, but yeah, I uh, just added a quick thank you sentiment onto there. It's just a couple of ones cut from white and then stacked on top of each other. So really, really, really simple that one. And then the final two cards are what I'm basing the tutorial on. I haven't finished the tutorial yet. Um, there's going to be a different version of this technique using the leaves um, in the tutorial. So technically I've done seven cards, but I haven't finished the other two yet. But you'll see them in tomorrow's video just as like background ideas. But this is the whole concept that I'm doing for the tutorial, which is, a, it was a serendipitous kind of background idea. I'd left a background drying overnight and a die cut had fallen on it, and then I kind of discovered this sort of technique. So basically, you add all of your aquaflows or watercolours to a background, you place your die cuts on there, um, you can sprinkle over Nouveau powders and stuff as well, but the die cut sitting on top of it sucks up some of the colour and gives you this ghostly kind of effect in the background I have put Nouveau Shimmer Powder over the top of this one but you get this ghostly kind of effect if I hold it so it's not catching the light you can see the ghostly effects there and then you can also use those die cuts on another card as well so that's what the tutorial will be if you want to see in um, in depth how to create that and also in the tutorial I'm kind of I've sort of showing it a different way um, so this one I flooded the cardstock first with the colour and then put the die cuts on but the one in the tutorial that I've currently left to dry um, I have started with just the white card, put the die cuts on the wet, the wet white card and then put the colour on. So we'll see what the difference is. Sometimes you get still um, a little bit of white detail in it. Um, sometimes it does completely flood the design but I'm hoping we'll kind of see some of the white details still showing in that. But this was the uh, main sort of background one of the backgrounds that I was doing to test that this technique does still work. Um, and uh, you know just have a card to show you as well. And I used another one of the sentiments that I bought recently that says happy birthday. And this one is 3852E if you're interested in that one as well. So that's that card. And then I used all of the leftover acorns from that one to create this card. And I've used those golden aces in the background, the little confettis. I also just put random blobs of glue and put some of the gold gilding flakes on there as well. I've put all of the die cuts on there. Um, and then I just used some hearts and gems from my stash to finish off um, adding sort of that scattering kind of look using some gold ones and some peachy coloured hearts in there as well and then I've just used that same thank you sentiment doing it in the satin gold mirror card uh, shadowed with white onto a vellum backing piece to make it stand out nicely so those are all of the cards 
and don't forget to check out tomorrow's tutorial video if you want to see the other two versions um, of th those two cards I just showed you. And then a closer look at the box, you can see all of the beautiful details on here. And actually, uh, the panels for this, I had cut the main box from the ginger pie cardstock, and then I would cut all of the decorative panels just from white, but I felt like it looked too boring. So, again, that Aspen Gold Mica Mist, I did actually spray it onto this, but if you didn't like spraying, you could have used it in your water brush as well. Um, and I just sprayed it all over all of the panels just to give them a beautiful little bit of um, subtle gold sparkle to them as well so all of the panels have got that aspen gold mica mist on them um, and then I've also done it on the little pumpkin as well which I've layered up together and the extra die cut that I had cut for the first card that I showed you where I had um, snipped out the word eternally to put back onto this one I had the word grateful still left so I just snipped out the word grateful and put that back on here and because this was in white card with the mica mist over the top the word eternally had kind of disappeared and I'd already used the gold one on that card so I didn't want to cut another one just to get the wording so I just used my Dymo labeler on it to write eternally which looks very peculiar when it's written in capitals like that it doesn't look right but I think I've spelt it right um but yeah, just added that on there. And, and that's why I went with black and white baker's twine to tie it together so that it matched the black and white of the Dymo labeler as well. Um, and you've just got all of the patterns all over this box, really, really pretty. And um, you've got those two portions inside there that you can put your gift cards inside of or just a little message. Um, and don't forget, you can use that beautiful, um, what did it say on it? Uh, Forever thankful. This one could be just a sentiment on one of these little tags to pull out as well. It could be forever thankful and then you just write something on the back that you're thankful for them for. So it doesn't have to be gift cards at all. It could just be, um, you know, a couple of nice little uh, messages to the recipient of your gift as well. And then just put a few chocolates in it. And don't forget, you can change how you do this box too. You can cut off these panels so you don't have to have these little pockets on the inside at all. You can also stick one side together, which will help the box stay um, in the perfect sort of shaping you probably saw at the beginning of the video when mine was stuck together these bits do go inwards a little bit but if you did decide to keep one side shut this would keep the box in the perfect position and then this one would just close against it so it kind of depends what you want to do but I like the fact that you can keep it completely open like this if you want to um, it maybe it gives you a few more options of what kind of gift you could put inside it as well um, or having one shut maybe it gives you more uh, room to shove a few more chocolates in and they're not going to fall out the other side as well so it's kind of up to you how you want to um, to use this little box and then how I decided to um, close mine just to show you that you don't have to use the locking mechanism um, that's part of the die set I literally just took a piece of the black and white baker's twine that tonic do which is currently on offer for only a pound um, a spool if you haven't got any of their baker's twine and you want to try it out the colours that they have left it's only a pound um, I just stocked up on some more black and white because I find it really useful um, but yeah just literally thread it through tie it into a little bow you can faff around with the bow as much as you want to make it look really pretty um, and then you've just got that gorgeous little extra detail on there that's holding it shut and also matches that Dymo labeler that I put on there as well so um, I really hope you enjoyed this up close video looking at Tonic Showcase number 39 which is the Thankful Harvest gift box. Don't forget to check out tomorrow's tutorial video if you want to see um, the other two backgrounds that I will have created using the leaves um, from the die set to create a couple of these kind of watercolour aqua flowy, nouveau shimmer powdery, ghosty kind of backgrounds. I'm not sure what I'm going to call it yet if you couldn't tell. Um, but yeah, I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to get hold of Tonic Showcase number 39 or the twine or cardstock or any of the nouveau products that I've used that are still available, um, there will be... Um, affiliate links in the description box below the video and I do also put the little picture links on my blog post as well and the blog post is always linked below the video too so if you want to get hold of anything then you're more than welcome to click on those and I really appreciate you um, using them as well so thank you so much for watching and I will see you again in the next video bye